Welcome again to Perspectives with Asima Silva. As you know, part of my show, I'm always interested in sharing people's stories, especially when it's really inspirational and just, you know, you want to know what, why, where, what happened, what was the motivation of someone doing something great, inspirational, motivational, and even educational. So if you know somebody, contact me. But today we have somebody, uh, Justin Omnivore, who's with us today. He's a WPI student uh, and started Doughboys. Uh, when I heard this story, I said, I need to know how a young man decided to um, do something so great within the city of Worcester. So this is a local show. Usually we do a lot of different types of show. Today it's local. But thank you again today, Justin, for joining us. Of course, thank um, you for having me. If the, Would you like to add in on something that I didn't share about you? Give us a little bit more. Um, yeah, so as, as I was shared, like I am the benefit director of Doughboys, which is a social justice and sustainability organization, um, you know, focused on addressing food insecurity right here in Worcester. I'm also the um, regional chair for the National Society of Black Engineers for the Northeast region, so all of New England, West Africa, and East Canada. Excellent. What are you majoring at at WPI? So computer science, I got my bachelor's. I graduated last year, and I'm currently still pursuing my master's in computer science as well. Awesome. We have to talk later. Um, <laughs> but uh, in terms of Doughboys, what, I mean, you're going into an engineering field. Obviously, computer science, uh, if most of my viewers know, I'm a software engineer, uh, also a WPI grad. Um, wow. But, you know, I, you know it's, it's a very lucrative or like very, uh, a career that is definitely wanted and out there. Uh, why Doughboys? What, what made you go into social, you know, uh, insecure, food insecurity. Yeah, and that's definitely a question I get often, you know, because, um, you know, computer science is very technical and then, you know, having food is something um, a lot more different. But um, I actually was I'm currently, like, working in the field in software engineering, but I really started to think about and, like, with the formation of Doughboys and especially with a lot of the, you know, social justice calls from 2020 and last spring of how I can like, best contribute my skills and the, and the tools that, and things I've learned at WPI and as well just in my interest and how I can you know, put that to a bigger cause. Because you know, every, you know, being a software engineer that doesn't like, put you in a label of like, oh, well, like, you have to sit at the computer all day. You can really always just contribute like, the skills you learn in, in general in any field to you know, a cause that's bigger than you. And that's definitely something that I took to heart and, like, and envision and, and throw into Doughboys. So you started this all by yourself, or did you get, get a group of friends, and how did you start it? Yeah, so definitely not. So I'll, I'll, like, the story of how it started was um, even going way back. So I am someone that just loved breakfast. I, act like, I don't start the day without <laughs> breakfast. So I would always, um, every day, like, I would have pancakes, like, going, I would eat, like, pancakes or breakfast. I wouldn't leave the house um, um, while um, going to high school, middle school. And so you weren't the whole granola bar or like a bar nope. and had to, had to have pancakes or breakfast. eggs or whatever. I would always like making food in the morning. And, you know, when I got to college, I realized that I didn't have as much time to be doing that anymore because especially at WPI, it's a you know, very like rigorous school. So, you know, pe people kind of forget to eat sometimes. But, you know, yes, that kind I've of, been there. <laughs> <laughs> been I kind there. of like didn't didn't really stop me. So I used to just like load up my mini fridge with like a bunch of these, you know, mini eggo like microwavable pancakes. And my roommates were just like, wow, you have a lot of these pancakes. And literally like one of them was just like, hey, you should start selling them. My, my roommate, Jordan. And um, literally from that idea, like just out of a joke, really, like in our dorm room, like the, the idea came right then and there. And he also like helped me come up with a name. And um, his girlfriend, like, also was able to, like, dr draw the logo, like, like, on the spot and literally on, like, a, like a paper plate. And just from, like, that kind of joke um, and, like, the, like um, joking business, like, the whole business started right then and there. And I was, I even started my freshman year, like, going to different dorms and delivering to people all across campus because um, it was just a wa wanted. A lot of people just didn't have food. So it was, like, a pretty good business idea. And, you know, for that, for the rest of that semester, I, you know, was doing that, but then, you know, school caught up and things became a little rigorous, but, like, the idea for Doughboys, like, never really, um, like, left my head. Like, I definitely stopped, you know, delivering and doing and doing deliveries at that time, but over time, I kept thinking about it, and then in some classes, I was able to work on it, and in some of my computer science classes, I was able to make web applications. I was able to, you know, just practice my computer science skills, and then finally, in my last year, um, the, like, in 2019, I really, um, I really started to think about, well, like, I'm graduating soon. Like, how can I um, continue to grow this personal product that I've been, uh, that's, you know, stick with me through this, you know, my whole college career. And 
Um, you know, the idea for like um, the idea for a food truck came at that same time, and really that's what I'm focusing on now, and like how I can launch the business and really get it, um, re really get it up to speed for hopefully, you know, in the next couple weeks. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Sounds like a great idea. Sometimes they come from friends and joking around. Yeah. Um, but so let's just go back one more thing. You also said you are involved in Black Engineers of Northeast. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So the National Society of Black Engineers, it's um, a national society, but it also spans all across the globe. There's chapters in in, in um, Africa, in Canada, and, you know, literally all parts of the world. And it's... Um, and really the mission is to increase the number of culture responsible black engineers who excel academically, succeed professionally, and positively impact the community. And I got involved in Nesby my freshman year because my brother was involved and he was also a WPPI student and, you know, kind of um, introduced the organization to me. And I, I, you know, I jumped in right onto the executive board for the WPI chapter. Um, and I fell in love with it. It's, you know, again, just like the social justice organizations and causes and all the affinity groups at campus were things that, you know, really um, I found passionate and also, um, you know, made friends out of, you know, going to those meetings and general body meetings and um, all the community service events that we do. And now recently, I recently became as the chair for the, for the region. And that, again, it's propelled, it's, um, I, I'm, you know, I'm interested in doing all these things because it's it's what I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about, you know, helping and supporting underrepresented communities and uplifting and giving opportunities and and you know just educating people on how they can best utilize their own skills, especially in engineering, um, and really you know make make a name for themselves and really just find power within themselves. So, can you also tell us a little bit more about like food insecurity? Yeah. How are you addressing that? How do you find people with food insecurity and how is Doughboys addressing that situation? Yeah, so, you know, I kind of said it vaguely, but food insecurity is a very vast, wide problem and it's especially prevalent in in colleges, um, you know, all over. But really, like when I was a college student, I have experienced food insecurity. There's, you know, Meal plans are expensive. You know, grocery stores aren't open all uh, all times of the days. There's food deserts all over, especially in you know in Worcester, all, you know, all around. And I realize that this is a problem that it it needs to be addressed. Um, you know, right now, you know, going back in like history, you can look at we used to be like a more agricultural people, just living off the land and things like that. But things have shifted to like a more profit based um, system. So really, with Doughboys, I'm um, Really with Doughboys, I'm trying to, you know, introduce this new sort of business where you can be focused on, you know, gaining, you know, gaining profits and, you know, starting your own business and being an entrepreneur, but also really focusing on having a socially just um, mission. So that's why we're registered as a benefit corporation. Our full name is Doughboys Benefit Corporation. And really one of the plans is our, our like, main overarching campaign is the Feed of the Movement campaign where we are, you know, advocating and just really supporting, um, supporting food, you know, food justice and food security. So one of the, one of our main um, events under the Feed the Movement campaign is having our community breakfast series. We've able, we've had um, two already, but really the plan is to have a consistent basis for where we're partnering with local food pantries or homeless shelters where we are, you know, literally giving out free or reduced meals to people who are suffering from food insecurity on a consistent basis and partnering with um, other community, um, other organizations in the community that, you know, are willing to sponsor and again support this mission of not, you know, taking the, taking the, um, you know, money, money focused um, experience on food and really just again, just making it about are we feeding people? Are we making sure that people have the resources they need to have productive days and, you know, contribute their best foot into society? Can you tell me what kind of food you are giving out with Doughboys? I know you talked about Eggos when you started <laughs> off. What, what's, what are you offering now? Yeah, so definitely our menu is, um, is, is pretty good. So our staple dish is called dough cakes, which are inspired by Japanese fluffy pancakes. And there's, you know, these, there's these um, souffle style pancakes, which we make, in, we make from scratch and they come in um, and we like mix it with fruit or different flavors. So we have buttermilk, cinnamon, blueberries, strawberries, and again, like it's it's just like a really good fluffy pancake. But we also have our You're making um, me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's really good. I gotta bring the truck up here sometime. But um, we also have these um, sausage egg and cheese balls that we call dough balls. And again, it's just like a really good kind of um, venturing into like the lunch area where it's like you know just like a nice little ball of like um, you know meat and dough. 
And um, we also serve fruit, eggs, and we're, we, we do like catering events. So, you know, we're, we'll, we handle like cater, um, breakfast, your breakfast needs. So if you want eggs, sausage, bacon, that's all things that we can serve and do. So right now you're on a food truck. Where are you located? So if uh, someone wants to say, hey, I want to go try this. Yeah, so hopefully our food truck, um, we're almost ready to like re up and um, up and running with the food truck. So um, we're located in Worcester. We're partnering with WPI to really cater with some of their events, but we're trying to focus on um, you know serving serving the schools and also you know feeding people with our feed the movement campaign, our community breakfasts. But we are doing catering events right now, so we, you know without the food truck currently. But again, like. We're, we're just open to the community and we, we're um, open to reaching out and partnering with anybody in the community. So, um, you know, check out our website, www.doughboys.org and definitely just reach out because we are ready to partner and, you know, really get our foot, um, foot into the community this fall. So how many people do you have uh, with you working in this organization? So there's five people, including me, and I, it's really beautiful because it's, um, besides me, it's a staff of all women. And um, you know some family, some you know some not family, but it's it's just really it's really powerful for me because um, they're all they're all they're all black women. And you know before I started this business, I envisioned that like oh in every in every aspect of this business, I wanted to be focused on being socially just and you know uplifting underrepresented communities. So you know I love that the fact that my business is the it looks as it's you know embracing these underrepresented communities and it's making them and it's putting them in positions to really you know um put themselves out of the community and develop their own skills so again it's like it's just like really great that like how i hoped it, things would work out is uh, they're panning out and again just hope to continue that and really just um you're recruiting people that are underrepresented and don't normally have the opportunities to you know excel in the professional area so how are you finding time with still being a master student um, and, and having this organization on the side. Yeah, so I definitely think you know, time management obviously is an important thing, having a schedule, having a calendar, but it's really about like the passion, I would say. So, you know, at, at the end of the day, like no one's forcing me to do anything. No one's forcing, you know, the business to happen. And people obviously are, have, have doubts on like how, how it can even run, you know, having the social justice cause and everything else I'm doing. But as long as like I know what I'm trying to do, because I'm saying I'm trying to address food insecurity, but really it's about you know addressing just world hunger in general, and really just feeding people, and and again just like making sure that people have the food that they need. So as long as like I know that I'm contributing towards like a good and just cause, like it gives me the energy and the time <laughs> to to get that stuff done. So can you share with us like a feedback that you've gotten from um, somebody that you either catered to or helped in terms of food security? Yeah, so it's, it's, you know, people always, like, 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 I've definitely wanted, as, you know, coming from, like, the STEM field, people, like, I love feeding people as well. Like, I, I always used to, like, make food in college for, like, my roommates, as I said before, and, like, all throughout my four years. And whenever I, like, am able to feed someone or just, like, that look in their face or just, like, you know the silence when people are digging into the meal <laughs> is, is the best feedback because it's like oh wow like what i'm doing is contributing to your day like i'm you're, you're getting the energy to continue out and go forth and do what you need so i've definitely gotten a lot of positive feedback from like the community breakfast events that we've had in the past and you know people just really enjoying the food and then um you know gotten feedback it tastes pretty good but um hope you know i'm, I'm looking to you know expand that because you know our our events in the past have been limited you know ha you know building up the staff and being sort of like the startup but you know as we move forward definitely just it's certainly a community-based organization like it started with you know a community it started with underrepresented students like myself so just like every time you know someone tells me how they feel or how any any positive even constructive feedback it's yep. always something that contributes and helps my business grow every day so i'm curious since you have this truck do you eat at it every morning? <laughs> so, uh, um, almost. Like, that, that's another thing. Like, I'm like, oh, man, once it's all up and running, like, I could just go to my own truck and get my breakfast all the time. So, yeah, it's still, it's still in the works, um, you know, a few more, few more things to, like, get it really, you know, up and running. But, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's something I'm looking forward to, to walking up every day and, you know, getting my own breakfast. <laughs> that's great. Now, what about um, looking forward? You're still a student. What do you envision in five years? What is your hope? Right now you're doing a truck. Are you looking into a restaurant? Are you looking into 
getting more trucks. What's your hope to be in five years? Exactly. So the, thanks for that question. So um, I'll say like again, like our mission is um, to be a social justice sustainability organization focused on addressing that mission of food insecurity. And so really for me, the the goal is to eliminate food insecurity. And starting in Worcester, even more specifically, you can know, get started at WPI, um, but in these colleges, because it's a prevalent issue there. But, you know, really just Can you define, how, before you move on, mm -hmm. just define for our audience and for myself, exactly what is food insecurity? Uh, the reason why I'm saying that is because when you talk about colleges, you know, people think, well, there's, a f you know, food cafeterias there, there's restaurants there. Can you describe, and before you a answer that question, just so that we're all on the same page, yep. what is food insecurity? So food insecurity is the lack of access to adequate um, culture responsible food. So that can be because you may live in a food desert, and that is an area, and a food desert is something... Of, at a location where food is not accessible to you. And that may be because you don't have transportation to a grocery store. That may be because the food that is in your area is, is not healthy, it's, it's not you know, ripe. That may be because that, um, you know, the food is too expensive for you to purchase, or it may be because the food is, you know, you, you may be living in an area that only has fast food. So food insecurity is, is, where, is when you do not have access to you know, food that is um, adequate enough for you to be living a healthy and responsible lifestyle. And a lot of the times it's not because of your own circumstances, it's because of the environment and the situations around you. So that is food insecurity and that is again like the goal of Doughboys to eliminate that. To, um, and to, to like your earlier question of to figure out sustainable ways of, of addressing that. So one way we do that is with our community breakfast events by giving di um, direct um, relief to, to people suffering from food insecurity. But it, it spans so much um, farther than that. Food insecurity is a problem of not just resources, it's also a process engineering, um, a process engineering issue. Because like um, if you think about food waste, you know, a whole nother issue that we haven't even figured out how to really start tackling. Like, I believe the last time I checked, we throw, about, we throw away about the size of Pennsylvania and you know, the state in food waste daily, like every like single our day. our country. Our country, America. And so look at all that food that can be going to people that are suffering from food insecurity. So again, like Doughboys is looking to become a leader in support of feeding people and making sure that food insecurity is not a, pro is, is not a problem moving forward. So as you had mentioned, like we have our truck and we have our truck and that's one way, that's one tactic of addressing food insecurity. But you know, you can do, you can continue doing that with getting more trucks or, you know, other ways um, of, you know, other, other vehicles. Um, and one, and one of the ways I'm trying to do that is by um, thinking about just not out, just not, um, just not trucks. You know, you can, you can, um, you can get a brick and mortar store, but you know, that only serves one location. Right. And you could also just think about, you know, other ways of delivery. If, you you know a quick a quick sneak peek like like Uber Eats has just decided to start like um and all these other delivery services they're they're delivering things with drones like you know thinking about how it's not you know it's not about like profits or anything how are you going to like get food to people that need it and so um and also just other things of like hey well um how are we going to address this food waste issue how are we going to um like how can we do more food sharing options like so not just you know being a direct, um, di a direct server of food, but also just being an uh, organization and company that is, is addressing food insecurity in so many different ways and you know, in so many different avenues because there's, there's literally so many things you can be doing. And again, like Doughboys wants to be one of the leaders in, in you know, addressing that issue. We have a few minutes left, but I wanted to touch on this since you brought it up, uh, food waste. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it, culturally speaking, uh, we in this country do do a lot of food waste. Uh, I have noticed when I have been out uh, to dinner with uh, people from different countries or different cultures, they're astonished at how much we don't finish on our plates and how much we throw away. Um, so, but, but I guess the question is this, is it going to be a cultural shift for us to not food waste? And the other aspect is, I've asked a few people this, like, wh why would you buy so much or take so much if you weren't gonna eat it, at, eat all of mm -hmm. it? Uh, and some people say, well, it was gonna go bad anyway. 
If I wasn't going to buy it, it was going to sit on the shelf and go bad anyway. Or if I didn't, uh, you know, take that much food, it was going to be thrown out anyway. Um, how, do, how do you answer these questions since you're kind of like d dabbling into these kind of issues? What is your perspective on how to solve this problem? Well, yeah, to answer your question, yes. So there will need to be a cultural, a cultural shift in how we address food. So as I was saying like before, like we used to be, like as a country and just as a world, we used to be a more agricultural people just living off the land, um, you know, making our own food. But now it's a lot more profitized. It's a lot more of just, oh, well, here, here's, here's your meal um, and, you know, here, here's my, you know, bucks in return. But we do need to have this cultural shift and, we, and there's a lot of companies out here in terms of like food waste that are now saying, okay, well, there's a lot of food waste, so we're going to be a company that um, takes this food waste and then um, you know, repurposes it for a different, you know, different reason in the community. So again, like really we're thinking about like, um, like as, I, as I mentioned, like we are going to, re try, to try to get people to rethink like how food is thought of. It's not, you know, it's not about like, oh, well, you gotta go to the grocery store and buy your food and this and that. But it's like, no, like are people being fed every day? Like to be honest, like I, I like I think about it in my in my head, like if I could, you know, if the first thing is just getting people fed and then and then like figuring out how the business works. Like that's why we were that's why we did these community breakfasts early because we were like, okay, like we wanna figure out how we can do this mission mm -hmm. and behind it we'll figure out how we can build a sustainable business. But really it's gonna take everyone to start thinking about, okay, well people need to start eating. Like like I like I don't think it's natural that people are on the side of the, you know, side of the roads or just living in, in like um, different locations just saying like oh I need I need food like can someone please help me no like as a community if there's people who have access to food we should be supporting those people and then thinking about okay well later we can you know profitize it or like you know distribute funds but like we need to think about how are people like like we're all humans we need to be supporting our, our ourselves and our in our community before we start you know really thinking about all this profit so again just have like you know making doughboys push that mind shift, mind shift switch is something that as a benefit director is definitely going to be an integral part in the work that I do. So when are you open? When is your food trucks open? So we, we're doing a couple events, but the food truck should be ready by about mid-September, mid so a couple weeks. A couple weeks. And where will we find it and what time can we show up? So yeah, definitely there's a lot of um, organizations since the food truck will just be around around the city. So, you know, you can catch us at the parks. We're going to be um, working with a lot of the different, um, the, like different locations around the city. So like, um, you know, Redemption Rock Brewery is another organization that we definitely hope to partner with. So just, um, and then as well as just being on the WPI campus will probably be one of our main actions and just like supporting students there. So as soon as, you know, as soon as all this information is up, we'll be ready to go and we're, we'll be ready and open to accepting all customers all around, all around the city. If people want to find out more about your organization, I know you mentioned the website. Do mm -hmm. you want to just go into it again uh, for our viewers and give us a little bit more information on what they can find? Yep, so that's um, at doughboys.org, um, www.doughboys.org, as well as um, I have my YouTube channel, which is all about um, Doughboys as well, called The Dough Club. So you can definitely find us there, and also we're on social media, uh, Instagram and Twitter. So that's um, doughbyz on Twitter, Instagram, and as well as LinkedIn. And on this YouTube channel, what uh, topics do you talk about? Same thing, social justice, sustainability. Some of the videos I've done are about doing an elevator pitch, um, um, you know, working on your resume. Also, I document my progress with the business. It's also, you know, it's kind of about my life and how I'm, you know, just trying to venture into the social justice space. So um, a lot of content just around that, around the city and just, um, you know, the, the community. Sounds great. Um, is there anything else you would like to share about your past in terms of motivation? We're, we're almost out of time, but wanted to give you a last few seconds to have any other words of wisdom from your experience, because somebody who is doing engineering plus social activism, great combination, wanted to know if uh, you would want to share some words with some of the younger viewers. Sure, yeah. If, you know, if I have this stage, the biggest thing I'll say is... Um Definitely just chase your dreams. For me, um, I love pancakes and, you know, I never thought what, I, it was just weird because like, I was like, oh man, it would be great to run a pancake business one day. And now being a 23 year old man, I'm like, wow, like I'm actually doing it. Like, <laughs> and so just never like always do what you're trying to do. Um, always just focus on your passion. Like if someone is like doubting you, definitely just, just like think, well, is this really what I'm trying to do? Um, and also just ask for help, ask for, ask for mentorship, seek guidance, reflect, 
um, you know, do affirmations if you're religious. So, you know, just, just to like take time to focus because this world is kind of crazy. So really just think about what you're trying to do and then just pave your own path. Sounds good. We're almost out of time. So as I'm going to wrap up, um, what, a, what a great joy to talk to someone who's improving their life uh, in their personal life, but also giving back to the community. Uh, and it's always great to hear these stories. So as I've said before, if you know anybody or want to share your story, please contact me. Uh, and I want to thank Justin again, and I hope him best for his uh, pancake idea. Um, definitely going to be wanting to stop by to see how that pancake tastes. I was getting hungry as he was speaking. We're pulling up to the studio soon. So <laughs> to everyone in Worcester, come soon. We'll, we'll be around. There you go. So I hope you enjoyed the show and join us again with Perspectives with Atama Silva.